I have a problem. A problem with the Pogona Mermex Baddiest Colony that I dug up in March. The ants are fine, thriving actually, but their setup could use some improvements. Right now, it's made up of two Formisquarium XLs and an XL Outworld, all from arthropodantics.com. To get things straight, the setup works very well. As you can see, the colony is thriving. However, with so many stinging ants in the foraging area at all times, it becomes difficult to clean. It also just doesn't get to display the ants as well as I'd like. This is a very unique species, and I think it's about time that they get a setup that reflects that. So then, in this video, I'll be taking you along as I create an amazing naturalistic foraging area for this amazing ant colony. Let's get started. Some of you may know that by far my favorite way to keep ants is with an artificial nest attached to a naturalistic foraging area. I've only done this with one colony so far, my fatal Irea. They are housed in two artificial formicaria, which are then attached to a huge 55 gallon foraging area, decorated to look like the desert cliffs that these ants live on in the wild. Now, of course, Pogon and Mermex Badius are from Florida, where they don't exactly have mountains or rocky cliffs. However, the Florida scrubland habitat that these ants call home is still quite nice looking, and I'd like my own little slice of it, right here in the comfort of my own home. To begin the project, I selected a large 10-inch circular container from Pioneer Plastics. This will serve as the foraging area for this colony, made to look exactly like one of their natural mounds in a white sand Florida scrub habitat. I started by bringing the container out to my workshop. This is where all of the formicaria and outworlds on arthropodantics.com are created, including the very same white sand nests that the Pogonomerx vadius are housed in. Because I wanted this setup to look like an ant mound, I knew I wanted the connection tube to come up from the bottom. Of course, to make this work, I had to raise the container slightly off the ground to make room for the connection tube. To accomplish this, I decided to use a smaller 6-inch circular container as a base for the larger container to sit upon. I first tried the container itself, but this is ridiculous. It sits way too high off the ground and won't look good at all. The lid, however, will only raise the container slightly, giving a much cleaner look. It also just so happens to be the perfect height to just barely fit the connection tube underneath. Perfect. I simply attached the lid of the 6 inch circular container to the bottom of the 10 inch container using hot glue. This will give just enough space for the connection tube to fit underneath without raising the foraging area too much to be distracting or strange looking. Once the small riser was secured, I used a soldering iron to melt the hole the tubing will fit through. I made the hole at an angle so that the tubing will not be too steep. Pogona Mermex species are not great climbers, so if the tubing was too steep, they may not be able to access the outworld easily. Once I had a hole I was happy with, I test fit the tubing. As you can clearly see though, the rim of the lid is blocking the tubing. Thankfully, this is a simple fix. I snapped part of the lid off with some wire cutters, and a perfect chunk came off for the tubing to slide right through. However, it's still not sitting quite flat. The angle is still a bit too steep, and the tubing is getting kinked. This could easily prevent the ants from moving food inside the nest and trash outside, which is not good. To fix this, I just shave down a bit more of the acrylic to allow the tubing to come in at an even more gentle angle. This time, the tubing sits flat with a gentle curve and no kinks. Once I had the tubing sitting right, I applied a generous amount of hot glue to keep it held in place. And it's looking great so far. Next, I mixed up a big bucket of UltraCal 30, the same gypsum cement used for all Arthropod Antics ant keeping supplies. This cement is very hard, meaning the ants won't be able to chew it up. After pouring all of the plaster, all I had to do was wait for it to begin curing. As it got more and more solid, I was able to slowly mold it into a mound. 
It had started out looking a little sloppy, but with a bit more work, it was ready to be coated with our white sand. Once it had a full sand coating, I adjusted the form a little bit more, and it was starting to look great. As you may notice though, part of the connection tube is still sticking out. We'll need to get rid of this to keep the natural look. To do this, I simply used a drill to drill out the tubing. This worked pretty well, and all that was left was just to clean up the nest entrance a little bit. With a bit of extra sand, everything was looking super clean, and it was time to move on to the next steps. To start, I grabbed a palmetto leaf, some palm bark, and some pine needles, all very common plant material found in Florida scrub. After a bit of careful planning, I added this plant decor to the outworld. I then gave everything a small dusting with more white sand to make it look like it's been there for a while. Next, I clear off a shelf and set the now finished foraging area in its new home. Now it's time for the hard part, moving the ants. Disconnecting the nests from the old outworld resulted in several angry, stinging harvester ants trying to attack the threat, me. This of course was rather stressful. This contraption made of various lengths of vinyl tubing and connectors will be used to attach the colony's two Formisquarium XLs to the new foraging area. I eventually got everything lined up and connected. The ants were quite shaken up and definitely not happy, but still looking good. The last step was just to hook up the new foraging area. Quickly after attaching the new tube, curious ants took to exploring the new foreign territory. It took a while for the first ant to poke her head out into the outworld, but when she finally did come out, she looked right at home. I still can't get over how well this outworld turned out. Once the ants are foraging at full capacity, it'll look even better. Looking at the workers peeking out of the nest entrance reminds me of watching these ants in the wild in Florida, which was the exact goal I had for this project. I also decided to add a test tube full of sugar water as a housewarming gift, as these ants are big fans of their sugars. While it's great watching the ants run around in this natural setting, my work wasn't quite done yet. The old and nasty foraging area was still completely full of workers that needed to get moved over and reunited with their colony ASAP. There was really only one way I could do this. I used my insect aspirator to suck up as many workers as I could. Once I had a bunch in a vial, I dumped them into the foraging area to reunite with their colony. After repeating this process several times, the foraging area was absolutely full of workers. It would take them a while to figure out their new surroundings and how to get back inside their nest. Now finally, all that's left to do is offer the colony some protein, and my work will be done. Everyone has been moved over, the colony has been fed, and now it's time for me to enjoy the fruits of my labor. Looking pretty snazzy, huh? I couldn't possibly be happier with how this setup turned out. I think it's done a wonderful job at highlighting these unique and amazing ants. However, I'm sure anyone who has seen these ants in the wild has been screaming at their screen, because I'm missing one very crucial detail. Charcoal. Similar to how western Pogona Mermex species like to collect gravel to put all over their mounds, the Florida harvester ant likes to collect small pieces of charcoal to decorate their nest with. While the setup looks great without it, it's just not true to how these ants look in the wild. Let's fix that. I went out and collected a bunch of charcoal from a random fire pit that I found. After thoroughly cleaning it to remove the brown Arizona soil and any other contaminants from it, it was time to give it to the ants. Almost instantly, they showed a ton of interest in the charcoal. It's certainly true that these ants love their charcoal, and the setup certainly looks more natural now that it's here. And with that, the project is finally finished. 
The queen and the brood are looking better than ever, and the foraging is the nicest I've ever seen. I overall couldn't possibly be happier with how this project turned out, and I hope that you enjoyed me taking you along the way as I put together this dream setup of mine. If you enjoyed, be sure to leave a like on the video, and check out the ant nests featured in this video on arthropodantics.com, link in the description. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you all later.